Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the LG G Watch R. This is the latest addition to the Android Wear lineup of watches available, and it's also one of the most expensive at $299.99, 300 US. You're looking at a watch that has very comparable specifications to devices that are less expensive like the Moto 360 as well as the Sony SmartWatch 3. It does have a heart rate monitor integrated, uh, magnetic charging here on the bottom that you'll have to use in tandem with the included dock which is micro USB powered in order to charge it. Uh, the 410 milliamp battery ensures that you do have at least two days of battery life if not more in my experience so far it seems like I'll be able to get closer to three uh, days and when I say three days I mean real world use not going to sleep with this on your wrist and with screen on all the time and that's one area where the uh, G Watch R really does outperform the competition and I'll get to that a little bit later uh, in terms of specifications for $300 you can see we've got a leather band uh, you have a 1.3 inch 320 by 320 resolution uh, circular uh, P OLED display critical because not only is this the best display you're going to find on an Android Wear device, it's also uh, the best pixel density uh, because it is 1.3 inches compared to the 1.6 found on the uh, Sony Smart Watch 3 and the 1.5 found on the Moto 360. In terms of design, also easily, in my opinion, the best looking Android Wear device to date really can make its way, or be, I should say I could be comfortable wearing it in any situation, something that I cannot say about the Moto 360, uh, which is a little bit more bumbus in my opinion, uh, and just not as refined and as polished, maybe uh, something more futuristic in my opinion. It looks more retro than anything else. Uh, here you can see uh, the device thinking that I've lost my phone because I'm pretty far from it, but the fact that it's maintained, well, it just lost connection, uh, but it had maintained connection. Uh, was impressive and that's another area that the R has been outperforming much of the competition. Uh, a Snapdragon 400 quad-core processor uh, underneath the hood here powering the entire experience. Of course you will need an Android phone running uh, KitKat uh, version 4.3 or higher in order to use an Android Wear device so this is really only aimed at those of you who have a current device and for good reason they don't expect people with older phones to be jumping into the Android Wear uh, arena uh, 512 gigs of RAM 4 gigs of internal storage again that heart rate monitor that is in standard it looks like I just reconnected to the phone uh, and a wealth of different applications that you can install third-party stuff uh, as well as what comes stock with the Android Wear experience like the Fit uh, pedometer for health as well as heart rate uh, management. There are just a lot of different things uh, that you can do with this watch that you can't necessarily uh, do with any other competing product. I don't mean any other competing Android Wear product, but I mean what Apple's going to produce. I mean the Pebble uh, and smart watches made by Sony in the past and Samsung's products that were uh, pre-Android Wear. I mean, Android Wear gives us a platform uh, to build on the same way Android has in the smartphone business. So I expect incredible maturation and development here. And for a first-gen device, this is exactly what I was looking for. So good internal hardware, uh, very good design aesthetic in my opinion, and it is comfortable to wear and good battery life. So what more could you really ask for? It sort of checks or ticks every box that at least I had personally. And then most importantly, it does well when it comes to voice uh, recognition, which is what this whole system is built around. After all, uh, it's really a Google Now extension experience in my opinion. Uh, what you're getting with these devices, you can see uh, email coming up on there right now for me. But I'm going to go ahead and dismiss that. Reddit. OK, Google, what is my heart rate? And you're going to see some of the accuracy here now. And this is accuracy I just couldn't get with the 360. Uh, the Sony SmartWatch 3 is capable, I would say, maybe even a little bit better on the microphone, uh, but maybe a wash. And this is also even quicker to check my heart rate. I'll try it again. Double tap can also reinitiate the uh, process, process, excuse me. The 360 seemed to take a little bit more time, now 65. So let's go ahead and get out of that. Step counter, uh, the launcher on here, some things I have installed like Evernote. We have a web browser. 
uh, and you can select, you know, I'll just go straight to CNN. And I have to say the OLED really does make a difference. Now keep in mind the performance we're seeing here, this is being streamed from my smartphone. My smartphone is nowhere near us. In fact, it may even disconnect. It looks like it's working though. We did get it. And so you wouldn't want to web browse on this, but you certainly could if you had to. And it's fairly responsive. It's not perfect, uh, but it works. You're not going to get a pinch to zoom. This is a mobile version of the site. And with this processor, this RAM combo, you wouldn't want anything else. Let me go ahead and get out of this. Uh, the Find My Phone, you saw it activating. Essentially, you touch it. It'll make your phone ring to let you know where it is. Uh, there's an application also so that you can use this as a preview monitor for uh, the camera on your smartphone. I mean, there are a lot of things being developed. If we jump into settings, you can see we can adjust the screen brightness, which right now is at six, the highest level. Uh, and we can take that very far down all the way to one. And that's even at one, the lowest level. And that uh, that's something I wanted to talk about at the quote unquote ambient mode that uh, the G Watch R will offer. It's still going to be much more visible uh, than what you'll get out of any of the LCD-based competition. And I think that's significant considering a watch is still supposed to be a watch, and that's why the always-on function is important. And if you can't see it, it isn't really always on, is it? I mean, it technically might be, but if your eyes can't see it, I don't know what good it really does. Uh, Bluetooth connection there, uh, the always screen on option right there. Uh, we've also got airplane mode, power off, the ability to reboot, of course, uh, reset the device, uh, change uh, which face you're using, I'll go through those again, and about, which is the software build. And again, the faces on here uh, vary from something traditional, you know, chrono style. Uh, do you want, you know, date and time? What are you looking for? Get rid of that. Giving us a little walkthrough. I mean, so there are a lot of different face types to go with, and that's what's nice. And they do look great. I mean, I cannot reiterate how much better the OLED display makes uh, this watch look than the competition. And here we go. This is the ambient mode again. Look at how readable that is. It's only lighting up the pixels that it needs to, like any OLED out there. That's why battery management is good. Let's check where we're at with battery management, speaking of which. 65%, pretty solid. I mean, I have to say that this thing has been a beast. It came out of the box at 100%, and I've pressed it uh, pretty hard, and it has held up quite well. So uh, design is on point, performance is great so far, voice recognition is solid, and that's what you need from a device like this. Uh, you know, you can install a lot of different software, as I said before. Okay, Google, navigate to Madison Square Garden. And there you have it. And if it didn't, if it wasn't able to actually, I would say, transcribe what I was saying, then you know you've got a problem. And I did have a lot of issues with the 360. And I'll mention it over and over again because it was a legitimate issue. Exit navigation. Okay, Google. What's the weather like in New York? And there you have it. So, I mean, this is doing what it should do. Uh, once you sync this up with your calendar and really, again, make it part of your lifestyle, I think it will become one of those devices where you wondered how you lived without it. Uh, many of you, I know like myself, stopped wearing watches because, quite frankly, you didn't need one because you had your smartphone. Uh, in this instance, they're making the argument that you need a watch again because it really can enhance your smartphone experience. And I would definitely say that the LG G Watch R makes that argument uh, in a compelling fashion unlike anything else before it. Uh, so a lot to like here folks. I think that uh, LG did a great job with this. It's not surprising considering the LG G3 also an engineering feat. I mean a five and a half inch display in a smartphone that's considerably smaller than the other phablets it competes with. So I'm not shocked that LG has hit what appears to be a home run here in the watch department. The only downside that I can see, again, is that $50 premium that you'll have to pay in order to get the style and features that it brings together, unlike any other 
uh, Android Wear device on the market right now. And it's comfortable at the end of the day, besides being uh, something I'm comfortable actually wearing in public. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.